Hello guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Tessa. This is Tessa's Tarot. This is going to be a January 2021 Oracle and Tarot reading for Virgo Ascendant. Virgo Rising, Virgo Ascendant, it's the same thing. Um, if you are a Virgo Sun, there is a possibility that this won't resonate. Um, and if it doesn't, I definitely recommend you checking out your Ascendant sign. I did post a link in the description box below. Um, if you want to kind of like double check, um, you can get like a free birth chart um, uh, if you go to this link and it'll tell you what your Ascendant sign is, okay? Um, so that information is down below. Um, and the reason why I'm doing it this way um, with these particular readings is because I am looking at the natal chart um, and what the current planetary transits, where they are currently transiting in that house if your ascendant is Virgo, okay? That sounded a little bit confusing, and I apologize for that, but basically, um, whatever your ascendant sign is sets up the rest of your natal chart, okay? And the zodiac signs follow your ascendant around the chart, so each individual house will have a zodiac sign attached to it, um, and then depending on the system you use, it could have two. But for, this, for these particular readings, I am using um, the whole sign um, houses so your um, so the houses that uh, are the most the how the particular areas of your life that are going to be the most kind of like affected in January 2021 um, that is how I do this reading okay so uh, that might have came out <laughs> a little bit like dismorphed. Um, so I'm sorry about that. But but basically just, you know, just follow your ascendant sign and it'll probably make sense. Okay, it'll probably make sense. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to read off what we have going on for January 2021 20, in astrology. Okay, so I'm co incorporating astrology into my Oracle and Tarot readings. And um, I'm going to just kind of give a brief overview on the, of the transits that are taking place. Um, and in what and in in what particular area of your life, if you are a Virgo Ascendant, are these transits taking place in January? And then we're going to pull Oracle and Tarot cards just to see what area um, of your life, you know, that is maybe getting the most of this energy that is going to be the most affected um, and that maybe you need to be aware of, okay? Um, so that's the layout for this, okay? And as the video goes on, um, you'll kind of like, you know, see how it goes if this, if you're kind of new to the astrology game. Okay, so we're kicking off January 2021 uh, with the sun in Capricorn. The sun is already in Capricorn. It's been in Capricorn since December 21st. We had the great conjunction between um, Saturn and Jupiter in Aquarius. Now the sun is in Capricorn uh, just earlier this morning, the full moon went into Cancer, okay? So the sun in Capricorn is transiting your fifth house. And the fifth house is going to be your house of creativity, children, um, and romance, okay? The moon, the full moon in Cancer is transiting your 11th house of networking, social dynamics, and um, innovation. Mercury in Capricorn is transiting your fifth house of creativity, children, and... Uh, romance. Venus in Sagittarius is transiting your fourth house of home, family, and roots. Mars in Aries is transiting your eighth house of death, rebirth, and transformation. Jupiter in Aquarius and Saturn in Aquarius conjunct is transiting your sixth house um, of daily routines, health, um, and just kind of like everyday work. Uh, Uranus in Taurus is going to be transiting your ninth house of long distance travel, philosophy, and higher learning. Neptune in Pisces is transiting your seventh house of relationships, partnerships, um, and just overall balance between you and others. And then Pluto in Capricorn is transiting your fifth house of um, creativity, children, and um, 
Oh my god, I'm having a moment here. And romance. <laughs> okay, so so like right off the bat, um, the biggest energies that are taking place in January are taking place in your fifth house and sixth house. Okay, because Capricorn is in your fifth house. Um, of like creativity and romance and uh, things of that nature. Um, and when I start playing the cards, we'll kind of see a little bit more specifically to you. It doesn't mean that like, you know, obviously if you don't have children, then it's it, something else is going to apply to you. It's going to, it might be more in terms of like a creative project or you could have like a new romantic interest in your life. Okay, and then also your sixth house and also the great Jupiter-Saturn conjunction. It's in your sixth house of like everyday routines. Um, so there could be definitely some, some doors opening up um, in that realm of just how you apply your everyday existence into the world. You know, the routines that you're involved in, your health, um, the job that you go to every day. So I see kind of these two houses being the most effective, but we're, we're going to see when we pull the cards. Okay. So then as we get into January, so this is moving, this is like once we step into the new year, everything I read off is once we step into the new year, that is what's um, happening in our cosmos. And then January 6th, Mars is going to enter Taurus in your ninth house of travel, um, tr uh, long distance travel, higher learning, and um, um, and like philosophy. Uh, January 8th, we have Mercury entering Aquarius in your sixth house and Venus entering Capricorn in your fifth house. January 13th, there's going to be a new moon in Capricorn, so new ideas, um, in, inspired thinking in terms of maybe something that has to do with work or a new project. January 14th, Uranus is going to go direct in Taurus in your ninth house. January 19th, uh, the sun is going to enter Aquarius, okay? Um, so on January 19th, the sun is going to enter Aquarius in your sixth house. So light is going to really start to shine on this aspect of your life, the sixth house everyday routines. January 28th, we're going to have a full moon in Leo, and that's going to be in your 12th house. And the 12th house is going to represent more of like your spiritual side, your, uh, you know, what you do when you're alone, uh, your creative side, the side of you that really allows you to kind of reflect and be by yourself. And then January 30th, Mercury is going to retrograde in Aquarius, okay? So this is just kind of like an overview of what's going on. Um, so it looks like your sixth house, you know, with this with this new shift uh, that we're in right now, going from Earth, 200 years of this um, Earth energy um, with the great Jupiter-Saturn conjunctions, uh, which happen every 20 years, they were in earth signs for the last 220 years and now they are officially in air. So there's definitely going to be like kind of a mental shift. So you might start to see your everyday routines and, you know, the the way that things are flowing at work um, and just your overall maybe kind of attitude day to day. You might start to see things shift a little bit more into the mental realm as opposed to the material realm. Okay, so let's kind of like take a look. A little bit more at what's going on here. So we have making a choice. For the first oracle card, I'm using the Enchanted Map Oracle and Spellcaster, Modern Spellcaster's Tarot. So making a choice. Okay, so there is a decision that you're going to have to make um, during this month. Um, and it could be like, I don't know if maybe like there's new opportunities that are showing themselves to you. You know, um, let's, let's take a look. So Make, so there's this decision that you have to make, slow and steady, okay. So kind of like taking the necessary time that you need to make this choice, okay. So it could have to do, it could have to do with your career. And then we have solitude. So really needing that extra time and space to really reflect on this. Okay, so yeah, so when I was first pulling this card, I got this feeling. I got not so much a feeling of maybe career, but making a choice between yourself and the world. Okay, 
like like making a choice between uh you know spending time alone it could be a love interest especially since some of the bigger transits uh and us being in capricorn season right now um this taking place in your fifth house which represents like romance and things like that so you could pause there could be maybe um a little bit of pressure to get involved in a relationship or um a little bit of um because venus is venus is currently in capricorn oh no venus is in Sagittarius. i'm sorry scratch that my bad so yeah so there's there's something that you that you need to spend a little bit more time thinking about there's something that you need to I, I'm really feeling this like you um, you know you really want to take the time you don't want to rush things you want to take the time to really reflect and to really see the path that's going to be unfolding in front of you 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 want to know where you're going you don't want to just like jump into something like if you're going to do something you want to make sure that it's the right path for you uh you don't want to waste more your time anymore whether it was with us with like a partner um or with a job uh whatever it, it was you just don't want to feel like your time is being wasted you don't want to feel like you're making the wrong decision with anything okay so you know it's it's really going to be about kind of like coming back to yourself and spending as much time as you need to just reflect you know without like having people pressure you without having people tell you oh you should do this or you should do that ultimately this is going to be a decision that you're gonna have to make on your own and uh, that you're gonna like need to give yourself the patience to make you know until you kind of have um, all the information that you need um, to so that you could feel like you're being guided in the right direction Okay, so getting into the tarot, we have two of pentacles, which is Jupiter and Capricorn. So coming out of Sagittarius season right now, um, if Sagittarius season did kind of open some ideas for you um, in terms of what it is you want to do, um, you know, there could be an element of, you know, figuring out if, if these ideas um, even fit in to fit into your idea of what's practical okay because you guys are are very are very practically minded you know you think in terms of the everyday details so it's like is this dream is this vision is this idea even kind of possible for me right now is this something that i can um even kind of squeeze into my daily routines at this point in time um so these are going to be some of the questions that you're going to be asking in terms of um you know when it comes down to ultimately making this decision that you need to make okay and then we have the queen of wands okay this is an aries card uh so this is a very creative energy this is about kind of paving a new path and then um so aries Currently, uh, Mars is still in Aries, okay, but it's moving into Taurus on January 6th. Um, and this is in your, and Aries is in your eighth house. So, you know, I think I'm, I'm feeling like you really just, like this is you just um like kind of wanting to figure yourself out you know like i tie this into this that this solitude you know with the solitude it's like you're the tower and you're just wanting to figure this out and you're right by the stream and it's kind of like i get kind of the same vibe over here you know you just want to like get to know yourself better you want to understand more about where this energy is going to take you 
what is going to come of this energy. Is this energy going to be practical for me? Is this energy going to be useful in down the line? Is it going to lead me in the right direction? Um, things like that. Okay. Like kind of that kind of energy. And then we have the Ace of Swords, which is very, very Aquarian. Uh, this is Aquarius, Libra, Gemini, very Aquarian, especially with all this Aquarius energy happening right now. Um, I feel like with your daily routines, like it might just come to you, you know, like you'll just kind of have this like quick, quick wit about you. Okay. You can be very like your, your mind is going to be very stimulated in a way that's going to make your communication and your idea and just kind of like your witty nature, um, and your expression and your communication is just going to be very clear. It's going to be very, it's going to be very clear. It's going to be very direct. And if you have a new idea, if you do end up having an idea, it'll just kind of come to you. It'll just appear. You won't even really have to all that time that you spend alone, just kind of like reflecting and contemplating, that's going to end up paying off while you're, while you are already um, involved in your daily routines. Okay, so the fact that you're going to take that time to nurture yourself, the universe is kind of going to like gift you. The universe is kind of going to like come in out of nowhere and be like, oh, here's here's a little magic spark. Here's an idea. Cause this is very like intelligent energy. It's very clear. It's kind of like when you have these like epiphany moments, like something just kind of appears in your head and you, you start to feel inspired. You start to have like this energy again in your, in your daily activities. So I definitely see something like that happening. And then we have the nine of cups, which is Jupiter in Pisces. Neptune is currently in Pisces. So there's there's um, with Neptune currently in its home zodiac sign of Pisces, there is this feeling of like th there's there's this underlying dreamy, there's this dreamy feeling in the atmosphere. Okay, even though we are headed more outwardly towards that air energy, which is very much about the mental capacities, about communication, about our thinking, about our patterns, it's still being kind of guided by this um, unseen force of water, this kind of dreamy nature of, you know, dreams and ideas and like creative expressions kind of coming out into reality and it's guiding us. But the Aquarius energy is allowing us to communicate it in a way that's intellectual, that other people can understand, um, that can really bring um, people together in an interesting and dynamic kind of way. So Nine of Cups is, you know, like about wish fulfillment. It's about basically like your dreams coming true. Um, and you're kind of just going to like create your reality. Like I really see this Ace of Swords as kind of like you just creating your dreams, like you creating your reality in your everyday routines, you know, um, and kind of adding a little bit of that creative, interesting, fun spark to the everyday um, aspect of your life. Okay, and then we have Eight of Wands. This is Mercury in Sagittarius. Okay. So this is, yeah, so the, it's kind of like what I was, you know, this is about communication. This is messages being sent, you know, so you might start feeling very, you know, social, um, especially towards the end of the month. Once we get into Aquarius season, very inspired, you're going to want to just like socially, you know, you might just want to start expressing yourself and talking more and just kind of, you know, you might feel an impulsive desire to reach out to somebody, um, to see how someone's doing, to like go have fun, um, and maybe just like send a bunch of different text messages and, you know, just kind of reach out and become part of that community dynamic. You're going to spend like all this time like alone and reflecting, and then it's going to just kind of like come out at the right time, you know? Um, it's going to come out when it's 
like ready, you know. Okay, then for the last card, we have the Six of Wands. This is Ju a lot of Jupiter cards, a lot of Jupiter cards. So, you know, the, the accumulation of this Sagittarius energy that we have been picking up um, from Sagittarius season, it's really pushing its way right now into the, into the forefront of the new year. And now with Jupiter entering Aquarius, it's really any kind of ideas, any, if you have been building up energy inside of you in the last month, it's going to start to come out in a very dynamic way, in a very kind of like expressive, but community uh, oriented kind of way. So the Six of Wands is Jupiter in Leo. Um, and with the new, with the full moon in Leo, with your, in your 12th house, um, you know, it's, I, I kind of see this as you reaching this period of spiritual, um, in a way, kind of like a spiritual victory, like a spiritual awakening, you know, you kind of like um, step into your, your spiritual self, your full dynamic and um, witty and intellectual and innovative and, you know, critical thinking, creative self, you know, you're really kind of like stepping up your game over here and kind of like taking charge and, um, you know, you're not afraid to express yourself. You're not afraid to just kind of take the lead and to just kind of do the things that you think is going to benefit, not just you, but like everybody else, you know, um, and kind of like have fun with that energy, uh, have fun with that energy. So this is your January 2021 um, Oracle and Tarot reading. I hope that it was good for you. <laughs> uh, I hope it helps. So if you like my style, if you um, enjoyed this video, uh, like, subscribe. I'm going to be doing a mid-January 2021 video as well. Um, I do them twice a month. So come back and I'll see you again soon.